Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a few challenges that I have in picking a spot in an RV park or a campground and getting settled into that spot. And it's a little more of a problem in campgrounds rather than RV parks because campgrounds tend to be very heavily lined with trees. And trees are a big part of the problem. A lot of RV parks, especially in the city, will be much more open as far as trees go. So let me show you five problems I had <laughs> in getting my motorhome into this site and getting it all settled. My first problem was backing in to that space. Because normally you want to get way in front of it and then just back right in. But here, you may not be able to tell in the video, but there is a big ditch right here where I would need to back in. So to avoid running into this ditch, <laughs> I had to do my backing in from the road. And you see how narrow it is? That was quite a challenge. Somehow, I managed to do it, but it was very difficult to back into there without being able to come right straight in front of it. Another problem was finding the exact spot where my satellite antenna, that big black dome there, where it could get a good view of the satellite. Now at first I had my coach way out close to the road where I got good satellite reception. And then as I started backing up, I saw it going away. And the way I can tell is when I'm backing up, I have my TV on and the volume on. So if I get in a spot where the trees are blocking it, the sound will go out as I'm backing up. And if I move just another foot or two for the back, my satellite signal goes out. I also found that if I back in with my coach further out this way, the satellite signal goes out. So I finally found a good spot here where I get reception, but that brought me to a couple more problems. This is a really, really long space, and the electrical outlet and water is way back here. So my coach is hardwired with a 25 foot electrical cord and then I have a 25 foot extension. So that was just barely enough. And by the way, if you have to use an extension cord to reach this far, you really should get you one of these boxes. All it is, is that. So the cord goes into that slot and into that slot. So when you turn it over, it keeps the rain from getting to that connection. And also, it keeps the connection off of the ground. So if it rains a lot, it's not going to get into that connection. And I got that box <laughs> after I was in a situation once where I had my connection just lying on the ground there. Had a good hard rain that night and the water got into it, and it actually tripped a breaker. So if there's any chance it's gonna rain, you really should get one of those. Now, the next problem is getting my motorbike off of the rack there. It goes down this ramp. Now, if I had my motorbike onto there, and then backed off onto the ramp, the rear wheel would have been up against this railroad tie. <laughs> and then that would make it very difficult to get the front wheel off of that wreck. I would have to have somebody help me just yank it off to get the bike off, which I usually don't have someone to help me. I really hate it when they have barriers like this on a site. Some places just put big boulders right at the edge of your site. So what I had to do was pull my motorhome forward right here to get the motorcycle off right there. 
and then maneuver back into position. Then the fifth problem was getting level. And look how high off the ground my front wheel is. <laughs> it's about three to four inches off the ground there. And it's not a good idea to have any of your wheels actually hanging up in the air. So if I was going to be here for like a week or more, then I would have put a support under the wheel. Now to do that, take some work. <laughs> I would have to pull my jacks up, put some wood blocks underneath the jacks so that it will raise the wheels much higher off of the ground and then put some leveling blocks underneath the tires then raise the jacks back up take the wood blocks off and then re-level that way it would level with the blocks supporting the tires I can certainly do that but it means starting up the engine two more times to get it done and it's just more work that I don't want to do unless I just have to and I don't really have to <laughs> it probably won't hurt anything being like this for a few days but for any long term like at least a week then I would definitely do it so it took me about 40 minutes to get back then get the motorcycle off of the rack find a place where my satellite would get reception and then get my electrical cords hooked up and then get the coach level so <laughs> that was a lot of work to go through all that and I got it accomplished except for getting the wheel supported which you really should do now on this trip I am trying to lot dock in town as much as possible this place is a Corps of Engineers campground right on the lake that is a few miles outside of Nashville. Now the reason why I chose here, there's several reasons actually. The two or three days before it had been raining, very dark skies, so I was not getting much solar collection, not enough to really keep my batteries charged enough that I feel good for about. And the day before, I did have to run my generator a couple hours to give my batteries a bit of a boost. So being able to be plugged into electricity here, which is 50 amp by the way, then I had no more worries about the batteries. It had also been pretty warm lately. And rain and it being warm is a bad combination for boondocking or lot docking because it's warm or even hot inside the motorhome but I can't roll down or open my windows because of the rain. So having the electricity hookup solves all of my interior temperature control. I can certainly get by without electricity, but it's just something that's really nice to have when you get it at a reasonable cost. And it's only costing me $13 a night to stay here at this COE campground. There's times when I've spent over 40 to $50 for the same thing <laughs> that I'm getting here for $13. So getting that real good rate and the other benefits that come with it, it was worth it to me. Also, before I came here, I had been lot docking for 12 days in a row. After I leave here will be 17 days or actually 18 days. I'm staying here for five days while I'm in Nashville. So by the time I'm leaving my last day, I'm going to be ready to dump my waste tanks and fill up my fresh water tank with fresh water. So having that convenience was another bonus. It's fairly easy to find a place to dump your waste tanks, but not easy at all. <laughs> to find a, a place where you can fill up your freshwater tanks outside of a campground or an RV park. So all those factors really made it worthwhile 
and it's a pretty nice campground. Right across from me here is a boat dock and some people in boats there. Now I don't do any boating, but I like to park near a lake and be able to just look out at it once in a while. And with my windshield there facing directly to the lake, which is fairly close, I get a really nice view here. Now most of these campsites are heavily surrounded by trees. I kind of got lucky to find one where I got a little bit of a clearing enough to make my satellite antenna happy. <laughs> and just a little ways down this road, there's a designated beach that does have some sand. So if this was summer, I might want to go out and have a little fun playing in the lake. Now if I didn't have the satellite antenna, and I had a smaller RV and I didn't have the motorbike without those things then it would have been a much easier setting up process. <laughs> so if you don't have an RV yet or you're thinking about getting a different one these are some things you might want to take into consideration. Good day folks.